doing this evening? Oh, let me grab my harp. Oh, there's four of you here. Hi. Let me play you a little bit on the harp and then I have some fabulous things to tell you. of you guys here. Oh my goodness. Wow, Nepal. That's wonderful. Thank you for being here. Nice to meet you. Well, let me tell you what's on the agenda this evening. Did you guys have a good day? All well in the world? All okay in your corner of the universe? <laughs> well, I've had a busy day. It's been a lovely day. I've been getting ready for the group class tomorrow. Um, I had lots of lessons to teach today. Let me pour a cup of tea first. Let me show you this lovely tea tray. Isn't this so fabulous? This is a tea cozy over here. This keeps the tea hot. And there's a little tea cup there. And I've got some wonderful crystals. I always like to have you know, some fabulous crystals around and just beautiful things around that keep me inspired. So there's a, look at this chunk of citrine. I've had this for ages. Isn't this the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Just love this crystal. And I remember buying this when I had like no money at all. <laughs> like barely any money at all. And I just walked into the Gem and Mineral Show um, in Arizona and I just was like I need I just need this so I bought it and it's brought me joy ever since same thing with the with that beautiful picture that's behind us you know sometimes your return on your investment is just something that happens every day you know it can sometimes things can be expensive on the short term but over the long term they just really pay off you know so if you guys experienced that before, I know we can all experience that. Let's have a sip of tea. Cheers, lovelies. <laughs> On Friday, I've got a little scale video coming up for you. Today I was finishing up recording the F sharp major scale, <laughs> also known as G flat major, and then also D sharp minor, also known as E flat minor. So I was finishing up those for you. Those are for you guys on Patreon. You get you get a little scale and um, recording track to play along with and a tutorial on the violin and viola each week to add to your practice. And for all of the rest of us, they're just kind of one video trickling out each week. But tonight we are going to be uh, reading a little bit about Ivan Golombian's principles of violin playing like we usually do. And I wanted to talk to you about bow arm form because tomorrow is our group class using um, the Leopold Hour Graded Course of Violin Playing. You need this book for the class. And it's at 8.30 tomorrow night. Um, there's a link on my website under group classes if you're interested. It's open to the world to join. And it's, you know, just kind of a fun thing because we don't have a lot of time and opportunities during our life right now to, you know, do some community things. So I'm really excited about this class. Let me grab my violin and bow. And we're just going to touch base on a couple things. You know, our book one is all on the right arm technique. And so I want to just give you a couple pointers for those of you that are coming tomorrow or for just everybody in general 
on your bow arm technique. So how to hold the bow, your bow arm. Your most natural way of holding your arm, right? If you were gonna hold your arm for an hour or two hours or three hours, would you wanna hold it like this? Probably not. <laughs> so our most natural way of holding the arm is kinda like this, right? So your elbow is always below your wrist. And when you move your arm, you're moving it from this one little joint right here, right? Hey, Derek, nice to see you, and Potato J. <laughs> yes, it's so lovely. So we want to hold the bow like this, right? Or we like to call this kind of like the chicken wing arm or the handbag arm. So you want to you make sure that everything's kind of dangling, all those joints are relaxed, and then you're going to take your bow arm from that shoulder joint there, and you're going to just plop it right on whatever string you need. And then when you bow, try and imagine that there's a little weight on your elbow. And it's just kind of gently pulling the arm down. Because if your elbow goes up, it's not very comfortable and it kind of makes extra work for you to do. If your elbow's nice and relaxed, it just kind of helps everything flow better. So, a last little tip is on the bow hand itself. Now, when we hold the bow, thumb goes in this little nook here, complete the circle like this. These other fingers, and you can see the way I'm holding the bow, it falls into my hand. Another way you can kind of see that is if you're kind of tilting it slightly away from you. You see, rather than holding like this, Pulling it slightly on the edge there, and it just falls right into your fingers. And look at my wrist over here. Straight wrist, relaxed wrist, that's what we want. And then you're going to just put it right on the string there. So anyway, tomorrow we're going to be going over the warm-up checklist together. Um, that's something that I kind of came up with to run my students through when we first start the violin. Just kind of get everything with good form. We're gonna be talking about the bow hand, the bow arm form, your wrist, your elbow, all those kinds of things, getting everything nice and together. And then we're gonna be going through pages 18 through 21 or 22 in here. And we'll do some of the daily dozens as well. And there's some duets in here as well. So we'll be able to kind of play along together. And it's kind of fun, because in that, in that group environment, we can you know, ask questions, you can learn from each other. You, people can kind of demonstrate things if you know they want and it's just a fun little positive group I have the sweetest people in the, in the universe that study it's the violin and viola so it's just a really precious group of people from all over but with that I think it's time for some galami let me grab my book there we go it's time to do a little reading of the blessed Ivan Galamian <laughs> principles of the violin playing. But first, an, another sip of tea. Another sip of tea. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, I know we've been doing a lot of these live streams on Wednesday nights, and um, I know we used to do them on Friday mornings or afternoons and have like a little morning get together where we would read through like an ancient Greek, uh, like an article about the ancient Greeks and what were other things we were. Kind of doing. We would always have like a live stream as part of our little get togethers during the week. And then I'd usually give you like another little video to go with it. At the moment, the only the, like little video that goes with it is basically like a scales video. I was just wondering, is there anything, like are there any tutorials or things that you guys would, are wanting? I was thinking of making, I've got a laundry list of video ideas to make. Um, wow, all of a sudden lots of comments came. So, John Ross is here, Gross is here, sorry, Potato Joy, Chris is here, hey Chris, it's nice to see you. So, and isn't that crystal so lovely? Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. It's like a gigantic, it's like a lovely little gigantic, lovely little <laughs> gigantic citrine. It looks like a great big mountain range, I just love it. I grew, grew up around mountains, so I just, 
I like the rag the ruggedness of this. It's fabulous. So I completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh, we were talking about I was wondering if you guys had any requests for videos. You know? Um, is there a difference between that and the Russian bow home? That's a good question. Um, oh my gosh, Chris is here and Spock is here. Hi, Spock. Lovely, lovely. So, yeah, before I forget this train of, train of thought, are there any video requests that you want or are you liking our little get together? Sometimes I like to shake things up a bit. So I was wondering if you're kind of getting bored with our Wednesday evening um, you know, gatherings, but I love them. I really do like them. So let's look at this. We're going to be talking, we're in the section on your, the right arm technique. So we're talking about the bow and different kinds of styles, different kinds of styles. So last week we were talking about, let's remember, we were talking about detache and we were, I also think we were talking about legato. Do you guys remember what detache and legato are? So let's go back and see what um, Ivan Galamian's actual definition is. So for legato, let's see what he says. In the slurring of two or more notes on one bow stroke, which is called the legato, we are faced with two problems, he says. One is concerned with the change of fingers in the left hand, the other with the change of strings. And legato is like a connected and nice, smooth sound, right? Like la, 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 versus like that, 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 right? And let's review detaché. So let's go see what he says about detaché. The simple detaché, which has no special marking, a separate bow is taken for each note and the stroke is smooth and even throughout, with no variation of pressure. You can hear a really beautiful detaché stroke when you listen to Baroque music, for example. Um, so and then there's kind of different ways of shaking it up. You can put like an accented detaché. You can have a detaché porté interesting. There's some words in here I'm going to totally butcher. Some of these like terminologies I'm not like super familiar with actually because I mean I guess we just don't like I just don't run into them very much but it is very interesting to learn about them that's for sure. So tonight we're going to be learning about the martelet stroke. That's a quite common stroke. The martelet. Simple martelet. So let me see here. Where was that? I thought it was here, but I'm seeing he's talking about Martelet somewhere else. Um, Martelet is decidedly a percussive stroke with a constant consonant type of sharp accent at the beginning of each note and always a rest between the strokes. So you can think of something like that dun, 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 right? It's kind of a little bit more percussive, more accented, and there's a little rest between each of the strokes. So that's martelet. The accent in this stroke requires preparation in the form of preliminary pressure. The, and you know, by the way, for those of you that have this book, I'm on page 71. <laughs> so if you wanted to follow along, we're on page 71 here. The accent in this stroke requires preparation in the form of preliminary pressure. The bow has to pinch the string before starting to move. This pinching is a pressure stronger than the stroke itself will require, and it has to last just long enough to produce the necessary accentuation at the beginning of the tone. The pressure is then immediately lessened to the degree required. If this preparatory pressure is released too soon, there will not be any accent. If it is released too late, there will be a scratch. The correct execution is therefore mainly a problem of timing and coordination. The two fundamental types of martelet can be distinguished according to whether the actual note following the accent is to be short or long. So for example, you could think of like dead or da, da. <laughs> so 
The first can be called the simple martelet, and the second the sustained martelet. Let's pause for a sip of tea. <laughs> mm. You know what? I didn't tell you what kind of tea I'm drinking tonight. I am having a little tiny blue teapot of um, Egyptian licorice mint tea. It's from Yogi Tea, Egyptian licorice mint tea. It's so nice. It's really good iced as well. But you know, licorice is a little bit sweet and with the mint, it's like the greatest thing ever. Really enjoying that, I'm really enjoying that. So let's see, so that was a little bit about Martelet. Let's see what we're skipping, skipping, skipping. Let's move along to a different stroke. So this is called the collet, no marking. In the collet, the bow is placed on the strings from the air and at the moment of contact with the string is lightly but sharply pinched. Simultaneously, oh, maybe it's like with the fingers. Simultaneously the pinch, the note is attacked and after the instantaneous sounding of the note, the bow is immediately lifted off the string in preparation for the next stroke. The pinch is very similar to martelet, except for the fact that the time of preparation is reduced to a minimum. In, it is in action, though not in sound, not unlike the plucking of the string, making, as it were, a pizzicato with the bow. The collet is used in the lower half of the bow, and the length can vary from extremely small to fairly broad. It should be practiced first with as little bow as possible near the frog, then in the other parts of the bow, including, for, for study purposes, even the upper half. In such a very short stroke as the collet, only the fingers are active. Right, so it's kind of like finger, finger motions. Definitely, you know, let's look into collet this week. So, so far we have legato, we have detaché, we have martelet, and collet. So those are interesting things. Let's write that down. <laughs> legato, detaché, martelet, and collet. Those would be interesting ones to do a little research on. And then the next thing we've got is spiccato. I think this will be the last one that we kind of chat about tonight. Spiccato. In this type of execution, the bow is dropped from the air and leaves the string after every note. It's kind of bouncing, right? Spiccato. In doing so, it describes an arc-like motion that can be re represented. He's drawn like a little line that looks like an arc here. The bow contacts a string at or near the bottom of the arc. The movement has both a horizontal and a vertical component. If the horizontal component is emphasized more than the vertical one, then the arc will be flatter. Let's see, in, let, I'm gonna just skip a little bit. Tone quality and dynamics will also be influenced by the height of the drop and the higher the starting point, the louder, it, and in general, the sharper will be the resulting sound. You can think of like when you drop a ball, right? If you were to just drop it a little bit, wouldn't be as like, you know, loud, <laughs> but if you drop it from a, a height, a higher height, it's gonna be, you know, a little bit louder. So let's see here, spiccato. Let's just keep on going. All right, well, I've just forgotten where I was. Where was I? In length, the spiccato can run the gamut from very short to very broad. It is used mainly in the lower two-thirds of the bow. So spiccatos in that lower two-thirds of the bow. And they're saying collets in the very lower part of the bow, but that actually you should practice it anywhere. You can, should be able to do it anywhere, I guess. So let's see here. A characteristic type of short and sharp spiccato can, however, be played entirely at the frog by dropping the bow almost vertically a spiccato at or near the point is possible, but it can also be the vertical type, and such a usage is pertinent solely where there is special sound effect that's desired. And it just kind of goes along. He really does go in depth into all of these 
um, different articulations. So next week we're going to talk about satile. I probably said that incorrectly. And I wonder what else we're going to get into. Staccato. Staccato, not to be confused with spiccato, but staccato. Ricochet. That's probably what we'll get up to next week. And then he kind of goes into a section that talks about bowing problems. Changing of bows, attacking the bow, um, alternating fast and slow bows, harmonics chords. So we've got a lot ahead. So much to learn from this blessed book of Ivan Delamian's Principles of Violin Playing. I just love this book. So thank you for hanging out with me while we do a little reading study time together. And I'd love to see you at our class tomorrow. It's very casual, it's very chill, but you're going to learn a lot. And it's fun to have some community time together you know, from, with people all over the place. So I think last class, that was it's every two weeks. So every two weeks on Thursday, you'll be getting this little blurb reminder from me. But last class, I think we had about, there's more than, there's maybe like 10 people that were there. A nice small little group. A lot of them are my students. And the, it's open, as I said, to, to, to worldwide. So you can kind of join in and have some fun and learn um, something nice and simple. You do need this book, our book one here, and it's all open strings. I know that sounds crazy and very simple, but it's such a fundamental part of our sound on the violin to be able to play the open strings. So um, we're gonna be learning kind of half notes and string crossings tomorrow and changing one and two strings, doing some Nice even quarter notes, combining all those rhythms. There's a few duets that we can do. And we'll do a little review of what we did last week, you know, which was literally just whole notes. We were working with whole notes and um, trying to, you know, refine the sound. And at the very end of the book, we've got the Beginner's Daily Dozen. So we're going to be doing a couple of these um, tomorrow. We might do three of them. I'm really, it just really depends on how much we end up getting to and it is kind of geared towards more more beginners but actually no matter what level you're at it's a great idea to practice open strings so even more of my advanced students like to take this class too so 8 30 eastern standard time tomorrow night it's thursday the 21st there's a link on my website if you're interested in more information and if you can't come to this one there'll be another one in two weeks and um, that would be fun to have you there for sure. It's always fun to meet you. <laughs> and I think with that, unless there's anything else that we need to kind of catch up on real quick. Um, oh, let me read you this. Let's read this. Let's have a little to quote from the great Terrence McKenna. This has been the quote on my music stand. I would love to send this book to all my students because I just find it really lovely. So he says, in bold letters, which I love, he says, Claim your place in the sun and go forward into the light. There are tools. The tools are there. The path is known. You simply have to turn your back on a culture that has gone sterile and dead and get with the program of a living world and a re-empowerment of the imagination. <laughs> which I love. So, you know, when we study in art and when we study music, we get to use our imagination and, you know, tap into the way that the music feels, the way that it sounds, the, you know, feeling that it evokes, the expression, just like if you were to practice reading something. Like, I've also got the Book of Psalms open over here as well. And the Psalms were... You know, no matter what religion you, I mean, I've also got like Rumi's poems as well. I've got so many, <laughs> so many different things over here. But um, the Psalms were originally, you know, poems that were sung on the harp. And I should, you know, what? Hold on. Let's have a moment where we we can like recite a psalm. 
And there's so many of them. We should just find one. Let's see. Oh, this is nice. I'll just, we'll just do like one little paragraph. I don't want it to fall into my tea. That's the only thing. <laughs> I don't want it to fall into the tea. Let's conclude on a little harp note. Wouldn't that be nice? And we'll just all go out with a nice vibe. Get the Psalms. Lovely book of Psalms here. Okay. I might need to move a little bit closer. How about we do the very first song? We'll just do the first like little paragraph or something. little psalms <laughs> along with it but we all love I know everybody loves the, the psalms the 91st psalm 21st psalm all of them let's read a little quote from Rumi I love Rumi as well there's one I've been reading this week and they're like little thoughts for the day like little tiny poems I love this one. And if you know me, you know I love this idea of contrast because in music we have contrast and in, as humans we have contrast. I've been through a lot of contrast. So I know we all have, but um, it says, observe the qualities of expansion and contraction in the fingers of your hands, right? Expansion, contraction. Surely after closing, the closing of the fist comes the opening if the fingers were always closed or always open, the owner would be crippled. Your movement, right, change, is governed by these two qualities. They are necessary to you as two wings are to a bird. I just really love that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Rumi, but oh my gosh. Let me just read you a tiny little bit about Rumi. This is the preface. It's called Jewels of Remembrance. Throughout the intricate tales of his Methnawi, I'm going to not say his name correctly, so I'm going to just say Rumi scatters pearls and jewels of wisdom and remembrance, words that catch the light and reflect it to our soul. When it is really hard, one word can make a world of difference. A world that once was dark becomes light and expands. New meanings open and a new world of relationship becomes possible. This is the invitation Rumi extends to us to see the light of love. And he's capitalized light and love. The light of love. To see. The invitation to see the light of love behind the light of this world encourages us to open up to that capital light which truly shimmers all around us and within us if we would 
open our eyes and hearts to see. He often tells us that it is this light that is our true nourishment. And I like it just makes you feel so good to read this book. <laughs> it's like you know you don't realize that you're so hungry for some good thoughts. And that's why I just love to have it's very important to have good things around you that inspire you, that uplift your soul, you know. So anyway, darlings, thank you for listening to me babble a little bit tonight. This was Rumi. Rumi, and this is from his book called Jewels. So I got this in a used bookstore for five dollars. Um, but you can get it on Amazon as well. Thank you, Chris. Let's all do a group hug real quick. Rumi, Rumi, Jewels. And of course, the book of Psalms is wonderful as well. Let's do a group hug. Group hug. Put your arms around yourself and feel the love coming your way. One, two, three, four, five. Lots of love. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next week. I'll hopefully see some of you in the class tomorrow. That'll be fun. Um, if you want more from, you know, this channel and from everything, you can always check out Patreon, you know. There's a lot of stuff there um, to help you on your musical journey. And if you ever want to reach out for lessons too, you can do that too. Or you can just hang out and, you know, enjoy the fabulous times together. And Sylvia's here. I was wondering where you were. Hey, Sylvia. And John. All right, you guys. Well, sweet dreams. And don't forget that you're a magical earthling. <laughs> and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.